All right, this is the official beginning of the um, intention tapping for Inner Peace webinar. Welcome to everybody who's here with me live and to everybody who's going to be watching this on a recording. I know it's, um, I know a lot of people signed, we had 350 people signed up. Um, there's only uh, a much smaller number of you who've turned up live and I hope it's uh, going to be worth your while. I think there's something about live that, that makes it better anyway. Maybe I, I um, Maybe it's just a belief that I have, but I like the thought that people are actually out there right now um, listening to this. And I like to be respond to things in real time as much as possible. So thanks everybody who's uh, here. I see that we mostly have people from the USA, Canada and Australia and New Zealand, which of course is because of the timing of this webinar. I like to alternate the timing to different time zones. So the next one will be more um, suited to people in the UK and Europe and that one will be in the middle of the night for the US people and Canada people and vice versa. That's the way it works out. Okay, there's a lot of stuff to go through. I want to give you as much value as I can in uh, the time that we have. So let me get started. Okay, so um, this is the first time I have run something on the topic of inner peace. And it's just that I see so much warring in the world. Now, war has always been with us, but... Um, now there's a lot more warring happening, um, especially I think social media and, and a few other things have exacerbated this situation. People are continually outraged and upset and um, offended and, um, and so on. Sometimes rightly so and sometimes not. Uh, someone who wrote a, a LinkedIn article a few years ago said that we, their, their big idea was that we were gonna reach peak outrage in that year. Well, that didn't happen because it's gone higher and it's gone further. So let's see what we can do about that with intention tapping. As always, we've got to get the disclaimer out of the way. So this is just informational and educational. It's not medical advice. Um, although tapping, which is part of intention tapping, is developing a fairly significant evidence base. Um, and I also incorporate other evidence-based techniques in the process. The entire combination must be considered experimental. Therefore, there's no guaranteed outcome for any particular person. And just because it's worked for a certain person in a certain way doesn't guarantee that it will work for you in that way. Therefore, you have to take full responsibility for your mental and physical health. And especially if you're dealing with physical and mental health issues, you should be consulting with a physician or therapist. Okay, so my aim is to introduce you to intention tapping and how to use it to experience more inner peace and help you calm the inner war with your critical judging and warring thoughts and feelings. That's where the big stuff really happens inside us. It's within that peace comes. We cannot get it from without. We think that 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 uh, if if there's if everything is right outside, then we will be right inside. But uh, because we're carrying so much non-rightness within us from our pasts and so on, we project things on the outside. Um, and we react to things on the outside and we can see war where war doesn't even exist. And, um, you know, I've seen many, many examples of that in, uh, in my life personally. And I've, I've been guilty of this, of course, because I'm human like everybody else. If we're going to help the world, then we want to help ourselves because when we bring the peace with, to ourselves, then we can bring it to others. We're not going to bring peace to others if we're warring inside because we'll be warring with them. Okay, the process we're going to use is called um, intention tapping, uh, aka intention-based energy process. The process I originally coined intention-based energy process uses intentions to create change. And then I combine that process with tapping and call it intention tapping. And the focus of that process is to release your emotional attachments which are behind the worries and challenges and suffering that you have. And, uh, and to restore your body energy, in, you know, which the energy which flows through you to flow and balance, which gives you clarity and calm. And also you get connected with resources that you may have lost touch with and so on. A lot of this comes from uh, a, um, an insight that I had when I was having a tough time and uh, during that time I was, I was uh, doing a whole bunch of things. One, one of the things was that I was drawn back to reading Byron Cody's excellent book, Loving What Is. And this statement 
jumped from the page. It's not the thoughts, it's the attachment that causes the suffering. And of course, I knew this because I had learned tapping. I'd learned at EFT originally and then developed our own way of, of tapping. Uh, you know, we studied with Gary Craig and then uh, my good friend, Dr. David Lake and I developed simple energy techniques. And I knew that it was the emotional attachments because you could have a thought that upsets you. And then when you do this tapping process, you could have the same thought and it no longer upset you. So it wasn't the thought itself, it was something else. So it's the emotion attached to that thought. And uh, in this moment of insight, at this time that I um, was drawn to this statement, I, uh, I had the insight that I had was, what if we could use intention to produce that shift, to release the emotional attachments? And uh, that's where I came up with this simple, uh, intention, which has become one of the core intention statements of this process. I release all my emotional attachments to this problem. Instantly, I felt a shift. Now, I've, I've played around with intentions for years and years and years and years and years. I've been doing this stuff since I was a teenager, and I've read just about every, um, you know, self-help, pop psychology book that's out there, and a whole lot of psychology books. And uh, before this, there are very few intentions that did anything for me, but this caused a massive shift in how I was thinking and how I was feeling simultaneously, and it was so dramatic and so immediate, and uh, and it lasted. And uh, you know, then after using it a few times to release some attachments and and starting to feel shifts inside my body and in my mind. I, I felt the tightness in my chest that was associated with this problem. And I realized that, of course, there's a disturbance in energy flow. There's a disturbance in the body when we have problems. And so, of course, this tapping process, that restores the energy flow. It's one of the techniques that's really good at restoring energy flow in the body. And uh, again, I had the insight, what if we could just use intention? And so I formed a simple intention. I restore the right energy flow in this, in this case to my chest. Instantly felt an expansion and I just took a spontaneous, nice, easy, deep breath. And the problem was cleared. And, uh, you know, I experimented with that. And, and since then, it's become a thing. And of course, I combine it with tapping now and I call it intention tapping. And these core intentions as you'll see, are still a, a, a huge part of the process. We combine the intentions with tapping and the tapping approach that we use is so simple, you can teach it to little kids. And uh, it was developed by myself and Dr. David Lake, my good friend from Sydney. And um, this evolved from our work with emotional freedom techniques, which we learned from Gary Craig. And we basically um, tested and challenged some things that are included in EFT and uh, discarded some parts of that that were not needed and came up with a simpler, um, more user-friendly and more efficient process, which, found, which we found could produce similar results, but just more efficiently. And so that process of tapping, which uh, was something that I created jointly with my good friend, Dr. David Lake, that has become a core part of intention tapping. And it's something that I've been doing now since, uh, well, you know, I've been using tapping since 1997. If you had told me that I would be getting people to tap on acupressure points on the body as a way of helping them to feel better, even a month before that, I was said, you're crazy. In fact, even when I found out about this, I thought, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. But when I tried it, I found that it worked and it works exceedingly well. And uh, there has now been a massive amount of research on tapping generally. Um, and the tapping itself has been found to be a very active process. It's a simple, gentle process of stimulating uh, these particular points on the body using the fingers of your own hand. Um, for anyone who's brand new to this, I'll be demonstrating the approach and how I combine this with intentions very shortly with a volunteer, I hope. I hope there will be a, a volunteer who wants to work on uh, some stuff which is disturbing your inner peace. Um, some stuff which maybe is causing you to war with your thoughts or war with your feelings or war with your partner or war with the world. 
um, and then I can demonstrate the process and show it to the newcomers as well as uh, allowing those of you who already know it to have another opportunity to see how to apply it in this particular area with these particular issues. So these are the points that we use. There's a simple process of tapping, which we use using uh, generally using two fingers of the dominant hand. You tap gently on these points in any order on either side of the body. While you're tapping using this approach, you focus on whatever you're aware of, whether it's thoughts, whether it's feelings, whether it's body sensations. You can tap directly where you focus in on the problem or indirectly where you just tap and you get a benefit from just tapping on these points. Just stimulating the points can actually calm you down, uh, it can reduce cortisol and increase um, the good chemicals in the brain. It can change the brainwave patterns and reduce the anxiety messages and so on and so on and so on. And of course, today I'm not going to go into research because I want this to be practical and helpful as much as possible. We use a mindful approach where we accept and allow whatever's happening to be there. We notice what it is. We accept it. We allow it. We add tapping to its presence. And then we just follow what happens next, as I'll demonstrate. And in general, we find that the more people tap on these points, the better the results that they get. So we encourage people to tap every day for energy toning, because we find that if people do this on a daily basis as a form of emotional fitness, that their whole life tends to get better, that their, their, their set point for stress tends to come down and their good life energy tends to come up and they start feeling more optimistic and positive about life in general. In general, when you change the way you feel, you change the way you think simultaneously, and that's the process. This is a mind-body process that we use. There are a number of differences between what we do with SET and what people do with EFT. So if you've come from the land of EFT and you know emotional freedom techniques, you'll see that we don't use setup statements in, in this approach. You'll see that we, um, you know, we, we incorporate the finger points, we incorporate tapping on the fingers using the thumb of the same hand, a whole bunch of things. Um, the energy toning and the process of continual tapping, these are all differences of um, the SET tapping approach, which we incorporate in intention tapping. Now, this message here is for those of you who know tapping, because you will know that if you tap on these points during this webinar, you're going to get an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes of tapping on your system, which is going to be very, very beneficial. And if you tap along on the points while someone else is doing this with me, while I'm demonstrating the process, then you're going to get, get additional benefits, the process of borrowing benefits where you get to get where we've found consistently, uh, and many people have found that you you can get benefits on your own emotional issues while someone else is working on an emotional issue by tapping on these particular points on the body. Now, again, for the newcomers, um, we'll go through this when I do my first demonstration. I want to introduce the concepts of this webinar. And so uh, the, big, the big overarching concept is peace, and we're looking at inner peace. And of course, you wouldn't be here unless you wanted improvements in that, which means that there is some things or some processes or some thoughts or something that's disturbing your inner peace. So that's the question I have for you. What is it that disturbs your inner peace? What is it that's disturbing your inner peace? And it might be worth just noting that down because that's going to be something that you apply the intention tapping process to. And it's something that you can go away and do for yourself. One of the great things about tapping and the great thing about intention tapping is that there's a, a level of simplicity where you can get great results on your own issues. Now, there's also an advanced level that you can go to. And of course, that's why we have practitioner training programs and we have programs that take people, you know, way beyond what you can do at the simple level. But it can be hugely surprising and very positive to be able to calm yourself and to be able to, to, to resolve some of your own life issues. And so what is it that disturbs your inner peace and how does that affect you? How does it affect you? It's really important to, to, to identify how it affects you. For some people, it's, you know, it's uh, some things that are happening in the world. For some people, it's a particular person 
maybe it's um maybe like my wife you know was saying it's christmas because in australia for any or in in the us the holidays uh because uh this is a big season where there's lots of expectations and lots of issues and and a lot of people get highly disturbed in a season which is supposed to be about goodwill <laughs> and thanksgiving and so on and so it's interesting that uh you know some of the things that are meant to be good for us don't necessarily have that that outcome and i also wanted uh, you know to ask you you know because of course the opposite of peace is war and so what happens to you what happens inside you when you think about war what happens inside you when you see images of war or footage of war um whether it's in you know uh, you know scrolling through your uh feed whether it's on your television uh or device um and even the word war if you just stop for a moment and reflect and just notice what that word triggers for you what it evokes for you what it brings up for you and um this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be applying this process to let me just stop for a moment and just see what we have in the chat or, or, or let's uh, let me ask you just take a moment and maybe put in the chat your response to those questions what you know what disturbs your inner peace and how does it affect you and how do you respond to images footage of war or even the word war what does that cause for you and and of course I'm you know <laughs> you see me putting my hands here because usually it you know what it causes us is internal carolyn says it causes its arguments with my partner about money and business oh yeah this is uh, one of the biggest areas that people are, are warring with their partners over all over the world is money and finances and given the way that inflation is going in the world at the moment and all of those uh, concerns that people have um yeah there's a lot more of it on because there's a lot more pressure on households financially and so on pam says politics oh yeah yeah what our uh, elected officials or elected officials of other countries should be doing should not be doing or whatever those are you know often highly inflammatory topics who else has got something let's get a couple more and just you know i want to make this a little bit um a little bit interactive uh, Connie says, any unpleasant surprise makes me catastrophize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this was something that my daughter used to do quite a bit. Rachel says, COVID worries. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, still waves of COVID going through the world and different variants and all that kind of thing. Irene, Irene says, war causes me fear about the future. I'm at war emotionally about my twin sister coming for Thanksgiving. I love her and resent her. Oh, how true is that? Anybody who's listening will identify with that. You, you, you have two, two opposite sets of feelings towards uh, uh, your siblings often. You know, you can love them and hate them at the same time. Thank you so much for everyone who's putting stuff in, by the way. I really appreciate um, your contribution. Dale says, my thoughts and emotions get involved. War sets off angry feelings. That's right. So usually we we have things happening outside and they trigger feelings inside us one of the things that they trigger is projections um, our brain is capable of projecting things and, and imagining um, those things happening to us our brain is possible of uh, uh, and and typically will see a situation and imagine the worst so when we see war happening people all over the world are imagining the worst and the problem is, um, and let me just go back a slide. You know, Maxwell Malt says, your brain and nervous system can't tell the difference between something you vividly imagine and something you actually experience. I don't think it's just the vividness of the imagination. It's how you imagine it and whether you attach to it, okay? So you can have a really strong, vivid image of something, but you can look, if you're looking at it from the outside and you're not seeing it really happening as if it's happening to you, and you're not feeling it happening to you then it's just uh, you know you can see it as a projection and that's the difference between something that affects you and something that doesn't whether you're emotionally attached to it so 
the challenge is that we often project our mind is capable of projecting. It creates fantasies of the future that are that are uh, that cause us to suffer. And so we can use the intention tapping process to release those emotional attachments to those projections. And uh, you know, these are examples of statements. I release all my emotional attachments to this projection that this bad thing will happen. You can use that process in combination with tapping, and I think you'll be um, pleasantly surprised that you're uh, getting sucked into your mind's projections a lot less and getting disturbed by them a lot less. Um, I'm not saying that bad things aren't necessarily happening in the world or, or even going to happen, but nobody can really tell the future. Everybody's just making it up. And the things that we're making up are costing us. They're causing us pain and they're causing us to suffer when those things are not happening right now. Now, all right, what if there's a, a flood coming? What if there's a cyclone coming? All right, well, of course, you know, your mind will be projecting the cyclone, but there's different ways of, of that happening. One is imagining it happening and then working out a way that you can survive and working out a way around it or working out a way to avoid it or working out what you need to do. That's the helpful kind of projection. The, the part that we're um, applying this process to, which disturbs our peace, is the emotionally attached projection where we get to feel it as if it's happening to us now, even though it's not happening. Years ago, I saw a lady and the, the, uh, she was on the news and the cyclone was gonna be going, coming into her area. And of course, the news people choose the person who's the most upset to put on the, on the news because that uh, you know, gets, gets you more involved because when people are emotional, that, that helps you more. And so um, they get this lady and she's, and I can see she's extremely distraught and she's looking over to the right and I can see she's like she's looking at something. And then she described it. She said, I can just see everything I own being blown away. And then she just broke down. And I said to my wife, I said, she's having the cyclone a day early. She's literally experiencing the cyclone as if it's happening to her because her mind is projecting it as if it's happening now. And she's feeling it in her body as if it's happening because that's what our mind can do. And so that's, that's you know, that's what happened to her. And lo and behold, the cyclone did what cyclones often do. It changed course and it didn't go through her town and it didn't cause much damage at all around that area. And so tell that to her nervous system, tell that to her inner system, which was highly disturbed by that, um, by that cyclone. Now I'm gonna go through a little bit more and then I'm gonna come back to you and we're gonna do some tapping. I wanna, I wanna um, bring up the issue as well that there are some of us who have come through living in war zones. Like there are people maybe online who have literally been in war, but then there are people who have lived in households where it was like living in a war zone. And now maybe you're not in that war zone anymore, but you are not safe until you feel it and know it. And so it's possible that you are getting triggered into warlike feelings by things that are happening now that are really not the same as what happened back then, but your mind, because it's, because it's trying to keep you safe, is triggering you, is triggering you anything that looks like that, anything that sounds like that. Um, it's gonna remind you of how bad that felt to try and get you to run away from it and avoid it. And so then you end up having trouble in relationships, you end up having trouble in families, you end up having trouble at work, with, with work colleagues and all kinds of things that stir you up because your nervous system hasn't been updated. And so we can use intention tapping to help to update our nervous systems so that you're not getting triggered by the past in the present. So you can deal with the present as it really is. You can see where you're safe and you can also see where it's not safe without having to be hooked by past traumas and without projecting the past to the future, because this is what your mind does. If you've suffered in the past and then something coming up in the future that looks like it might lead in that direction, it will give you a reminder of how bad that felt. And uh, of course, because you've got emotional attachments that you've formed from the bad things that happened in the past, because you've taken meanings from that, you know, because you've made beliefs from that, you've made vows from that. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to be like that. 
you know, I'm never going to have a relationship again. Um, I'm never going to have kids, whatever it is that you decided. Um, that's the stuff that we want to release emotional attachments to. And I'll just put up one more screen and then we'll come back and we'll do some of this with someone and we'll be looking for a volunteer. The way that you want to, to go here is you want to, you want to apply this process to the past hurts, release your emotional attachments to the past hurts and what you took from them. See, when bad things happen to you in the past, you bring them into the future because you form beliefs. This means that I'm a loser. This means that life is scary. This means that men are, men are bad, women are bad, um, relationships are bad, whatever it is. And so when you release your emotional attachments to that, you can let the past be in the past. You can let the bad stuff be in the past. That's still true. But this doesn't equal that. Release your emotional attachments to this equals that because that's what stirs us up. That's what, that's what takes us out of our um, calm state. That's what disturbs our inner peace. Someone says some or some, something or someone does something and that triggers us because it reminds us of something that happened in the past where we were hurt. It brings up the hurt feelings from the past. And the problem is that our nervous system is incorrectly making this equal that. Because this person is doing that, it means it's going to end up like that was. Because this person is doing that, it means the same thing as what happened to me in, in the past. And we can end up shutting down our lives and we can end up being, being fearful of any attachments at all in the present because of what happened to us in the past. All right, so that's enough uh, to get started with some content. I want to show you this process um, with a volunteer. It'd be nice if we have someone... Okay, Carolyn says I'd love to volunteer. Let me see if I can find you, Caroline. You are quick, so that's great. Uh, what I, I, now, I need you to have good internet. I need you to have good uh, video. And you, of course, need to give permission to being recorded. Um, so what I'm doing, this is uh, I can promote you to, parallel, uh, to panelist. And then we should be able to let you um, turn on your video. So you should be receiving something on your screen. You should be able to click on that and um, and come on through. Okay, so here she is. Okay, Caroline, where are you? Brisbane. Brisbane. Okay, so it's like ten thirty in the morning over there, right? Eleven thirty. Yeah. Okay, uh, eleven thirty. Excuse me, uh, ten thirty. Goodness sake. Okay, two hours. <laughs> but you're. You're like us, you don't have daylight saving, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We voted against it. Now, do you know tapping at all? Yeah, I'm an EFT practitioner. Okay. So you know, um, so you know the points, but for the for the beginners, I'm going to go through this process. Okay. So we use all the same points as EFT, but if you've learned EFT recently, you probably haven't learned the finger points. Did you learn the finger points? Okay, good. Yeah. All right. We hey, all I'm happy. I'm happy demonstrate all the way you want to do it okay. however you want to yeah. do it so let's just first of all let's just um well tell me yeah let's start tapping right because that's what we like to do with with our approach is, be, is just get the tapping happening right so start of the eyebrow side of the eye under the eye top of the cheek these are all for the beginners they're uh, good acupressure acupuncture points under the nose and the midline under the lip and see if you watch Caroline, you'll see she already starts to calm down a little. Did you notice that? Okay, so just the process of tapping itself is calming without all the added palaver that people think that you have to always do with this. And of course, because you know the points you're tapping under the head of the collarbone and then side of the body um, under the arm, about a couple of inches under the arm or ladies middle of the bra band generally. And then you can tap on the side of the thumb level with the base of the thumbnail. And then of course you can tap on the side of each of the fingers. We also tap on the ring finger, okay? And, and then down here on the bottom of the hand. And then there's also a point on the wrist. You can just tap that with the flat of your hand or like you're doing or on the outside of the wrist. And then on the top of the head as well, okay? 
So these are kind of the main points. And once you know them, you can tap in any order on any side of the body for any amount of taps. As long as you're tapping on several points, you're going to get some benefit. Okay. So if you just keep the process of continual tapping happening during this whole time, then you'll be doing it perfectly. I have a feeling that point there. Is it that point? Yeah. That might be. You think point. that's particularly useful for me? I'm just noticing so sometimes maybe it might be just the tapping, but once you kind of get to around there, you just, it's just something happens. Mm -hmm. Just good to notice these things because then you're getting in touch with your own mind body and noticing what works for you. And it's good when you find out what's the best point because you know you can just go to that point and just get some quick relief by tapping on it. Okay. So we do continual tapping like we're doing. And then um, we also can do tapping using the thumb to tap on the side of the finger. So you let the thumb tap down on each of the fingers on the side of each. And then you can go back up the ladder and down the ladder and do this. And this is, once you get used to it, it's easy, it's non-fatiguing, it's discreet. You're, I could be doing it under the table without anyone noticing, or, you know, just, I like to do it while I walk along the street, you know, nobody thinks anything of it and so on. Um, so I'm gonna be tapping the whole time, which is what I do. I tap along when I'm working with other people and I'm gonna ask you to keep tapping the whole time, okay? And now that we've got the tapping happening, what is it? What's your issue that's disturbing your inner peace? Um, well, if if what I speak to doesn't um, like, I could probably look for various things, but the thing that's most alive is the the conversations that I end up having semi regularly with my partner, who um, like about money, about how I'm running my oh, business, yeah. and. Oh, yeah, you wrote that. that, was, that yeah, was yeah. And, Sorry, yeah. Yeah, All right. yeah. and if, if you're happy to work through that, that's definitely the thing of that course. is... this is such a, an issue yeah. of... Yeah. This is such a warring issue for partners yeah. and people yeah. in relationships all over the world. And it, it it's not so much the content of the issue, it's what it causes that's the thing, mm -hmm. right? And so other people are going to resonate even if they don't have that particular issue that they're having arguments with or fighting over, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so we'll just start. And um, the good thing about intention tapping is you don't have to be specific, okay? Mm -hmm. Like in EFT, yeah. you've got to find the specific and all this stuff. When, in intention tapping, we are giving the intention to your unconscious mind and the unconscious mind will give you the next aspect. Problems have many different aspects, but you don't necessarily know what aspect is most important or whatever. Otherwise, you would have fixed it by now, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done lots of tapping on this from lots of perspectives. And one of the things that I came to realize the other day is that I... I really struggle with all of the ways that manifestation is taught of like, well, just imagine how you want the business to look. Just, and I know some people are great at that, but I, I can't. Just say, yeah. I release. I release. All my emotional attachments. All my emotional attachments. To all their BS. To all their BS. Yeah, it's belief systems, right? Of course. <laughs> and then just let it do what it does. And you just keep tapping and let your unconscious mind deliver what's next. Could be a thought, could be a feeling, could be an image, could be a sensation, could be a memory. Just let mm. it go and notice what comes next. I, th I think what comes next is like I hear a, um like a what's wrong with me or i'm doing it wrong because i know oh, steve that, exactly yeah that's the fruit of this philosophy for so many people all over the world all right mm. just say i release i release all my emotional attachments all my emotional attachments to i'm doing it wrong to i'm doing it wrong 
that's big. That's right. So when you found something that you have strong emotional attachments to, when you use the statement, it starts to move the emotion and the feelings through the body of that attachment. And so you feel the movement of the feelings as it does that, right? And sometimes people just feel instant relief and other times they feel all the yucky feelings coming up and moving through, <laughs> which is what you're doing. So you just let it keep going, let it keep processing. And anyone who knows tapping knows that yawning is, a, is very common, sighing is common, body movements are very common. This is all part of processing because our feelings are meant to process through our bodies. And if you have a stuck feeling, you have a stuck perspective, right? So you have that, that stuck belief that you're doing it wrong. And now that's getting triggered all the time. And it's got all those feelings connected to it. Mm. Unless you start to release your attachments to it. Uh. Yeah, just keep tapping. Just let that keep processing through. <sighs> and then what it's you funny, do is you just know. Mm, well, I'm, yeah, it's funny because I'm so used to analyzing and pulling things apart from multiple perspectives. Hmm. Um, um, but. I'm, a, I'm noticing I'm a little bit trancy right now. So I'm obviously. All right. Uh, well, whatever that feeling is, is because you're calling it trancy, we'll just let it, let it be, you know, maybe good, maybe not so good, you know. So, of course, when you're analytical, that's all about controlling everything, right? So mm -hmm. we don't want you to go out of control or to lose control. So just say, mm -hmm. I restore. I restore. The right energy flow. The right energy flow to all of these feelings to all of these feelings and then just let it do what it does don't try and make something happen this is not something you do with your conscious mind all you do consciously is form the intention let it go let the unconscious do whatever it does it's like i can feel my mind trying to go back to go Okay, so what am I working on? And what's the problem I'm trying to resolve? And what did I think I was going to do here? It's like it's trying to. Of course, because that's that. what your mind has been doing the whole time. How's that been working? <laughs> <laughs> and you, because your mind can't work while your body is stirred up, right? Because it just gets, <laughs> goes around and around and around and around and around, you know, from yeah. one book to another book. So just yeah. say, I release. I release all my emotional attachments, all my emotional attachments to analyzing everything. Oh. <laughs> so analyzing everything. <laughs> I That's provocative. As well, you know, provocative energy techniques. So I can't help myself sometimes. Uh. Good. I don't mind provocative when I no trust. It's yeah. fine. Well, that's actually the only way you would do provocative is when you have trust and rapport and when it's, you know, within your own frame of reference. Anything else is destructive and negative. Yeah. Yeah, and un unhelpful and sends a client backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the thought that had occurred in between was the like the frustration. And if I tell you this mini snippet of a story, Steve, it's like, like I have a lot of incredible tools and I watch myself do incredible work with clients. And there's there's so there's so many logical reasons hmm. why my business and my financial situation should be radical should be radically different than it is. And it's like whatever this piece is that's stopping me from be from feeling emotionally safe enough okay to... let's go with that just say i release yeah. all my emotional attachments i release all my emotional attachments 
to money and business being unsafe? To money and business being unsafe. Blech. That's big again. Hmm. I just feel like this. Yeah. Almost like slight nausea of all the stuff that wants to inject itself from you it. Say I restore. I restore. The right energy flow. The right energy flow. I am a chronic over yawner, as yeah. you can see. <laughs> to system is very good at giving things up. My stomach. Uh, I sorry. Can you say I it again? Restore. I restore. The right energy. I restore. Flow. The right energy flow. To my stomach. To my stomach. And my diaphragm. And my diaphragm. And my chest. And my chest. And my throat. And my throat. But as you were saying that, actually, I'm like digestive system. I've had chronic digestive issues. So it's like I want to restore the that's right balance right. and flow of energy right. to my digestive that's system. That's the area that's getting stirred up all the time, right? And it's getting yeah. triggered into fear reactions. And so that's what's behind the arguments with your partner, right? Uh, that fear that I'm not good enough, fear that he'll leave me, fear that some tiny part of me thinks that he might be right. Oh, my uh, God. I know. Right about what? Uh, right that... right about what am I afraid that he's right um that it's like some version of I think I think I'm resisting right, finding the right, words is he, is he, I'm, I'm trying to clarify is he, that, is he right if he's telling you bad things or is he right because he's telling you how to do it so they're very different kinds of uh, right. yeah. one is yeah yeah I'm accepting yeah, no. he's right when he's putting me yeah. down versus I'm accepting that he's right that you know if I do it this way it'll work more effectively. That's very different kind of right. Um, well, actually, both are true, but the one that feels like it's a bigger problem is um, the fear. Oh, there's so much resistance to even saying this out loud. It's like the fear. Maybe he's right. Maybe um, I can't sustainably run a business maybe i can't make my business successful that's the ah, the part right, of okay. the all right belief. well yeah yeah that could that could be operationally true about the way you're doing it but ultimately true no all does okay so just say i release i release all my emotional attachments all my emotional attachments to him being right to him being right. My mind's scrambling with that, and I think it's just because I've been so that's heavily okay. trained in EFT yeah, that right. says, oh, you've got to be specific. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. But That's right. That's your analytical mind. That's okay. It's why you like EFT. <laughs> it's a challenge for people who are very structured to come to this approach, you know? Uh, there's a reason that I'm on this webinar, Steve. It's not an accident. <laughs> yeah, well, because the logical, linear, digital, sequential stuff doesn't always work because feelings have their own logic, okay? They get attached to all kinds of things that just don't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I could hear, feel, hear the part of me that wanted to defend and go, actually, operationally, my business totally works. Yeah. Um However, we end up having, my partner and I end up having conversations where he wants to challenge some of the ways that I'm doing my business. But as a tradie who's never run 
a business that's anything like mine, I have to take all of his advice with a grain of salt because he doesn't really understand what I'm doing. Okay. So just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all of my emotional attachments. To his advice. <clears throat> to his advice. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing I hear is like, like I immediately jump to my parents and like thinking again of, of like, well, I have to take my parents' advice. I have to take all these other people's advice. Other people know better than me. And it's okay. like. All right. So let's go with that. I released all my. So this is where this is. Um, this is your bit of that slide where this equals that. Right. So he's he's not he didn't cause this he's just triggering it <laughs> okay yeah. that, that, yeah. that was installed a long time ago back then right um and you got into this kind of fight in, inside yourself about whether you should have to do what people say or whether you shouldn't have to do what they say okay now real freedom is doing what's good for you whether or not mm. your parents approve okay mm. And actually, I want to reflect back as you were saying this, like, because um, I'm trancy, I can't repeat back exactly what you said, but it was something about, like, you know, having the freedom to not follow my parents' advice. And immediately that, like, the thing that was coming up that I would I was hearing is, like, very strong attachment to the good girl identity. Of, like, okay. I have all to right. do what you're told. So I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To following the rules. To following the rules. <sighs> yeah, there's a part of me right now that's like, oh my God, who would I be if I was not <laughs> following the rules? Far out. Here's the question that's more that. interesting, actually. Who would you like to be? I would like to be the person who is listening to her own guidance above and beyond everyone else because I already know that I inherently know how to be a good human who is kind and loving to other people and I don't need somebody else's BS rules about how I should or shouldn't do it. All right, well, that's all good about how you live your life, but that might not help you in business. No, it absolutely will help me in my business. <laughs> Because the wisest part of me already knows how to how to run a, a far more profitable, sustainable, enjoyable business than what I'm doing right now. I'm like so it's so I don't know if cloistered is the right word, but like All right. so so this held in place by trying to be a good girl and follow right. everyone. So you see what's triggering you with your partner, right? So your 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 partner is only copying the, the crap because of of your parents because you had to go along with them, right? And I, I have a feeling, I don't know, I could be wrong, but in this relationship, it might be a little safer for you to break the rules than it was back then. I'm just guessing, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. So you're so it is safer, but you're treating it as unsafe because you're reacting to it as if it's them. Totally. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, just in a little yeah, I have lots of logical reason to believe, like, he is in a lot of ways a rule breaker himself. He's in a lot of... He Why is... do you reckon you two got together? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And he's of, of my immediate family, you know, including all of my family of origin. Okay. He is... So I'm going most... to help, I'm gonna help him a lot. You can tell him, by the way, he can say thank you to me later. Just say I release all my emotional attachments... I release all my emotional attachments. To his arguments. To his arguments. Being like my parents. Being like my parents. So that's why I wanted to know what his arguments were, because he, it sounds like he's trying to help you. He's just coming from his own naivety but it's just what men like to help often you know that's that's they like to you know do that and you're like i don't need you to ride in on a white horse you know i like ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm dying. Yes. Yes, he wants to problem solve and he wants to help. All right, yes. we're going to run out of time, but I'm curious what's yeah. happening in your yeah, body yeah. right now. Um, apart from a big need to go and get more water. Um, yeah, well, you, yeah. Which I'll do after this. What's happening in my body? Just take, um, a, just take a moment. Well, I'm a little bit ungrounded. So what I will do after this okay, is just, so just take try a this. Just say I restore. Yeah. I restore. The right energy flow. Right energy flow. And balance. And balance. To all of my body. To all of my body. Yeah, when you went back to the parent thing, you left your body a little bit there to, you know, get engaged um, with that. So let's yeah. bring all that back. And just let it do what it does. And just notice. Hmm. I've got a whole lot of energy pooling around my lower calves and ankles that I think will feel heaps better just when I, I don't know, walk to the kitchen and get Yeah, yeah, because you're a kind of yeah. movement person and you need, I don't know if no. you heard about TRE, but, you know, that could be another good process for you to use because it's a activates the body's natural shaking mechanisms and you tend to naturally do that when you're processing um, trauma related stuff on you know whether it's little t or big t trauma stuff could be helpful for you to incorporate that just an idea <sighs> mm. yeah i've got a few ways that i do somatic stuff yeah all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna pause here just for the sake of the group what's your experience of the process thank very much thank you no worries okay just very quickly just for the group um watch your experience of the process because they're going to be wondering they're going to be like what she did a whole bunch of yawns but what what went on um, what went on um i guess it depends on whether or not the person who's listening has if they've if they've got an eft background and they've already done a lot of tapping i would say um that i feel like the process i just experienced was just like a really um uh, effective gentle um like really effective processing of stuff um but much simpler without anywhere near than the amount of words or analyzing that we would usually do in eft um, and for the person who is maybe not so familiar or, or um well versed in eft or energy psychology it's like i just let go of a whole lot of emotional baggage yeah good all right, yeah. thank you. I'd love to hear some thank more. So, yeah, um, keep in touch. All right. Sure. And thank you, everyone. I hope everyone. No <laughs> I hope everyone was tapping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, what I have to do is go here. Put you change back to attendee. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, let's um, move on with this for everybody else, and. Um, you know, I hope that you saw there just an example of the this equals that. This happens so much. We get stirred up in the present by something that's happening in the present, but really it's triggering something from the past. And so often it's our past hurts that are really stirring us up. So uh, thank you so much for volunteering. Okay, so I'm going to skip through um, and try and give you as much as I can in the time that we have. Um, of course, we are just scratching the surface, and I'm hoping that some of you are going to want to go further and do some more with this, because I would love to continue to work on these kinds of topics in, uh, in a program that I have coming up, of course. But before we get there, I've got some more content I'd like to give you. Um, first of all, um, one of the sources of war is in our relationships with those things that gets triggered, as we just uh, saw, and as I, as I showed you on the previous slides. And, the other war that's happening inside us is with our wants and our desires. We're all being triggered by FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, you know, Facebook and uh, all social media, you know, have shown that they can produce emotional contagion by hooking us emotionally. And uh, so all the time we're getting hooked by, by our wants and desired, and we're getting hooked into wanting more and desiring more. And that causes us to go into internal challenge because can we afford it? Should we have it? Do we deserve it? All those kinds of things that go with that. Then there's the issue of comparison. 
And the mind likes to compare and contrast all the time. And we always, always, always end up coming up with negative comparisons. And so that negative comparison is what leads to an internal civil war. You know, we compare ourselves negatively to others and we put ourselves put ourselves down. We compare others negatively with, with values that they should be conforming to, and then we're at war with them. They have more than we do, so therefore we you know, we should have more, and it's not fair, and all that kind of stuff that leads us into internal civil war. So the process is release your emotional attachments to all your negative comparisons. Identify the, 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 um, the comparison and just start using this simple process of tapping and, and releasing emotional attachments. Release your emotional attachments to what you have being not enough or to it meaning that you are not good enough because this is why you don't have more because it, you know, it's something about you. And, uh, and ultimately, when you do this, you can calm down a lot of your, your wants and needs and you don't need as much, you don't want as much and therefore you're not as needy or, or as aggressively um, competitive with other people in, in negative ways. Okay, then there's our own self-criticism and judgment. And Sanaya Roman says, having inner peace means committing to letting go of self-criticism and self-doubt. But how do you do this? How on earth do you do this? A lot of people end up being critical about their own self-criticism. A lot of people end up being uh, non-self-accepting about their own non-self-acceptance. This is what happened with um, when we were doing EFT. In EFT, they say, uh, even though I have this problem, I deeply and completely accept myself. And one day I was doing the EFT and, and, and I'm like, no, I don't. And then I realized that the issue was actually my underlying lack of self-acceptance and saying that I deeply and completely accepted myself didn't make me deeply and completely accept myself at all. That kind of intention, which goes against what you're currently attached to, doesn't work at all. So how do we do it with intention tapping? Now, again, there's a lot in this. I'm just skimming the surface. I'm just giving you something. I'm hoping that you'll go and do this. First of all, you start with your self-critical and judging thoughts and feelings, especially all your shoulds. And so you notice the, the, the self-critical voice. You notice what the voice is saying. Is the voice saying you're not good enough or is that I'm not good enough? And then however it occurs, you can simply say, I release all my emotional attachments to I'm not good enough. I release all my emotional attachments to you're not good enough. I release all my emotional attachments to believing this voice because a huge amount of our suffering is caused by believing that our thoughts are us, believing that our thoughts define us or control us. And once you release your emotional attachments to them, the thoughts don't define you or control you at all. They have no power at all unless they attach to your life energy, unless you have emotional attachments to them. So release the emotional attachments and then the thoughts go back to the land of the thoughts. And then you can have the thought that says you're no good or you're not good enough. And you think, well, eh, doesn't have any effect on me at all. Apply the intention tapping to your doubts your projections and your what ifs, because your mind will constantly have what if kinds of thoughts. And uh, you know this is just the nature of, of minds is that they come up with projections and what ifs. And so release your emotional attachments to the what if being real, just because your mind is telling you that it's real, just because your mind is showing you a, a, an image of what could happen, doesn't mean that that has to happen. Now that's logic, right? Release your emotional attachments to it and you'll see how true that is. And you'll be able to feel that it's true. And you'll be able to feel, yeah, okay, the real truth is that's a possibility out of millions of possibilities. Now, what else is possible? What else is possible for me? And you can free yourself from being stuck with only limited possibilities. And apply it to negative beliefs about yourself. How much of our warring, how much of our warring with ourselves and how much of our warring with other people comes from shoulds? So Caroline, you might want to also do some releasing emotional attachments to what your partner should be doing or to what he should not be doing. And uh, that will take the heat out of 
a lot of the things that he's doing because when we get into shooting we get into um you get we get into war basically because nobody does what they should do they only do what they do and so the minute we argue with someone who's not doing what they should do then um then we're arguing with reality the world shouldn't be the way it is but it actually should be the way it is because it's the way it is and uh now all right that's not saying that there aren't bad things in the world but when you are denying the way it is you can't deal with what is so that you can't change it once you release your emotional attachments to what people should or should not be doing then you realize that that's the way they are now you can deal with them the way they are rather than the way that your mind is trying to make them be then we have war with our thoughts and uh you know Novell Ravikant says they call it peace of mind, but maybe it should be called peace from mind. Like I said, one of the challenges is believing that our thoughts are us, believing that our thoughts define us, identifying with our thoughts, attaching to our thoughts. Sailor Bob Ad Adamson says, what's wrong with right now unless you think about it? It's the judging mind and the judging mind's thoughts and the attachment to those thoughts that cause the suffering. So how do we do intention tapping with our warring thoughts? First of all, just become aware of them. Instead of being the victim of your thoughts, instead of um, always saluting your thoughts, instead of being controlled by your thoughts, just notice them. Notice the thoughts. And now you are no longer your thoughts. You are the one who's aware of the thoughts. And from that aware position where you're noticing your thoughts, Notice any triggered reactions or attachments to those thoughts. In other words, when you think the thought or when you, when you notice the thought, when you focus on the thought, what happens? How are you affected by that thought? And then start releasing emotional attachments using this simple process. I release all my emotional attachments to this thought. I release all my emotional attachments to this thought defining me. I release all my emotional attachments to, because I think this, I am this. You know, I think therefore I am. Not really, okay? <laughs> More like, I think I emotionally attach to this and therefore I, you know, act as if I am that. So release your emotional attachments to having to believe or act on your thoughts and thoughts can't control you. And then restore your energy flow to any affected areas and feelings and emotions. And then there is feelings. See, part of this problem is that we have learned to be at war with our feelings. We have trouble with difficult feelings. And so what I love about tapping and what I love about intention tapping is that it can allow you to accept and allow your feelings to move in your body because feelings are meant to, have to, to happen and move and flow in your body. So what are the feelings that you should not be having? What feelings do you find difficult? What feelings would you rather not have? Start by releasing your emotional attachments to those beliefs that you shouldn't be having those feelings or that those feelings are difficult or that you shouldn't have them. And then you can allow those feelings to move. And once they move, they don't have to stay because feelings want to flow. Feelings want to be in flow. And once you can allow your feelings to flow, then you can flow and go with feelings rather than being at war with your own feelings, rather than being at war with your own body, rather than being upset at your own self. Okay, I also want to, want to encourage you that one of the wars I see people having these days is, is resisting life, resisting having a life, avoiding actually having life. And so, um, you know, a lot of people are trying to find peace by not taking action, by not uh, doing things by avoiding life itself because they're going to stay in safety but there is no no real safety by hiding and you deserve more than that and so in intention tapping we have a statement of releasing release resistances and aversions and i'd love to have time to show you this but it's such a short time 75 minutes so i'm just putting these up and i hope that you'll just have a go with this Anything that you're um, resisting, it turns out you're resisting the good stuff. 
it turns out that sometimes we're resisting the good stuff because we fear the bad stuff. So yeah, of course, we've got to release our emotional attachments to the projection that we're going to end up with the bad stuff. Of course, we can release our emotional attachments to the fear that if we go out there, we're going to get hurt or we're going to get sick or we're going to die or whatever. But we also need to release our resistances and aversions to actually living life because life is not hiding away unless you want it to be. Life and joy and love and connection and adventure and fun and all of those things are actually out there. And so maybe just try releasing your resistances and aversions to those things and see what happens. Now, I need to mention that um, for those of you who want to get more, there's lots and lots of stuff on intentiontapping.com. There's lots and lots of stuff on eftdownunder.com. And there's lots and lots of stuff on my YouTube at, at Wells Down Under. But there's also um, the level one workshop where you can learn intention tapping. There are two of these coming up in the new year. One of them suits US, Canada times and Australia times. Another one suits Australia times. Well, they all suit Australia times and, uh, and, and is more suitable for um, UK and Europe. And so you can find them at the events and training of intentiontapping.com or the intention tapping level one workshop on intentiontapping.com quickest ways to go to intentiontapping.com and get to the events page. But I want to mention a group that I've been thinking about doing for a long time. I've been planning this for a long time. It's, um, uh, it's, it's uh, a live interactive Zoom meetings group. So it will be a, a, a big group of people who join on Zoom every month and we get to, together and we do group sessions. And I'm going to actually present a little bit of content, not as much content as today. There'll be a lot more tapping in those groups. There'll be 90 to 20 minute, uh, excuse me, 90 to 100 minute sessions uh, on Zoom, one every month. Um, and we are going to, to work on the stuff that's happening in the world that's causing the stress as it happens. And so we'll be able to process things that are happening in the world as they're happening. And also we're gonna have some specific focus on, on key life areas where um, all of us have to, to deal with these. Health and fitness, food and weight, money and finances, relationships, self-acceptance, self-love and self-care, which is a huge issue for a lot, of, uh, a lot of you, I know. And ultimately what my favorite thing is about getting into action, getting into action so you can achieve your goals and live your values and live your life and ultimately building emotional resilience. So this is on the intentiontapping.com site. It's, uh, it's the Live More, Fear Less program. You can see the slide here. And after the, the, sem the webinar, I'll be sending this out so you'll be able to access it. So I'll send you the link. But if you want to go there right now, the, the link is intentiontapping.com forward slash live dash more dash fear dash less uh, forward slash. You should be able to get it from that. And... Uh, and that particular program, I wanted to make it accessible. So it's going to be the most accessible program that I've run. A lot of my group programs, like my 100% Yes, which is a structured program, and my practitioner programs, they have limited numbers. And so, um, you know, and, and the rates for those programs are much more. Um, this particular program, I wanted to make it more accessible to people. So although the, um, the regular rate's going to be $50 a session or $4.97 per year Australian, um, you can see the US conversions here. It'll be 40 US or 397. Uh, for the next seven days, it's going to be 40 Australian dollars a session or 397 for the whole year. That means, in fact, not 12 sessions because there's more. There will be a 13th session because I'm going to get started um, next month. We're going to we're going to get started with a session next month. Then, then there'll be a session every month for the next year. I'm adding in the power of intention tapping recordings. So if you're a beginner and you want to learn the, um, the process, you'll get those recordings. That program was originally valued at 299 bucks and it's just getting thrown in with this. And we're also going to have a group where everybody can get together. And I want this to be responsive. So I want people to suggest things. I want people to propose things. I want people to come up with um, you know, issues that they want to address. And of course, you know, we'll be working on things that, that come up. So today, uh, it was an issue of finances. But then, you know, next session, it might be an issue of, you know, oh, how do I do things that are healthy for me instead of unhealthy? How do I get my um, 
you know, and even if that that area you have under control, like always with tapping, you get to borrow benefits by going along and uh, tapping with other people, and there'll always be some good value for everybody from that. So I really would love to to see you in that program. It's intentiontapping.com forward slash live dash more dash fear dot dash less forward slash. Um, I'll give you the um, I'll give you the link in the recording when we um, when we finish the program when I send out the the recording to everybody. I'd love to see you there and I'd love to get your feedback. I hope that you have found what we've done today to be helpful. Um, please, if you if you could um, send me your feedback because I want to improve what I do and make it more useful and accessible to, to everybody. Um, so admin at eftdenunder.com. You can also write um, to us uh, at intentiontapping.com and on each of those websites, there's a, a form that you can fill in that you can contact us at any time. All right, well, for one of the first times ever, I'm actually going to finish right on time. So um, thank you, thank you. Uh, oh, Carolyn's gone and uh, put the, the link up. Good work, Carolyn, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Wow, you're so good and efficient in your business. I, 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 I um, uh, in, in that particular case, that, uh, that's great. I'll just make sure that the link uh, works. So for those of you who are on the webinar, uh, you've actually already got the link in the um, in the chat. So thank you very much for for putting that there, um, Caroline, and thank you very much for being my volunteer today. I really appreciate that. Uh, I know everybody um, really appreciates you for doing that and giving them the opportunity to tap along. Um, just go away and give it a go. Number one, be tapping. And just a reminder to do the tapping on a daily basis. Take the tapping with you through your day. You can do it by doing the finger tapping and taking it wherever you go. And then just take the first two core parts of intention tapping that I've given you. I release all my emotional attachments to this problem. And then just keep tapping and wait and notice what comes next. And then if you have a disturbance in the body, like I do in my throat from talking so long, I restore the right energy flow to this area or to this feeling, and then just let it do what it does and let it process and allow your feelings and thoughts and attachments to process through. And when you do that, you'll be more in touch with your body. You'll be less warring with your body. You'll be allowing your feelings to move. You'll be calming yourself down and you'll be releasing attachments, which are causing you to be at war with yourself or at war with the world. So thanks again, really appreciate you joining me and I look forward to seeing you at some future time. Ciao for now.